Hey everyone, Shin Virtuality here again with Minecraft. Um, and we're back at our base. About to start, well, hopefully, oh, one project for sure, but another one, hopefully if we get through the first one quickly. So, be sure to like, comment, and ring that bell. Anyway, um, last episode we made the uh, automatic sheep farming for their wool, and we actually got one of each colored type of sheep, so that was all fine and dandy. Uh, but it also um, taught us a couple of interesting lessons. So I've been working off camera. First off, <laughs> got some stairs, so I'm not climbing the side of a hill anymore. Uh, and I'm getting a little tired of enemies coming in and just sort of wrecking shop whenever they can. So. I've started to extend my fence line around, just head up on here. Uh, so now we have a pretty solid wall. Um, our doorway, which we'll get to in a moment, but we have these stairways on this and the corner way over there uh, with, you know, a little bit of a, a lip around so we can climb up, take a look around, everything's nice and lit. Uh, we can take a look at Mushroom Mountain there. Uh, another thing I did off camera, just growing some mushrooms extra big just for when I need them. Which isn't anything that we're doing today, but you know, whenever the need calls for mushrooms. Um, but what we're actually going to do today, um, I want to fix this door. It's nice you know, fence post and a carpet, I can get up and down and it's all fine and dandy, but you know what? Um, a wall of this structure needs a door to sort of go along with it. And I wanted to make myself a piston door for some time now. Um, so we're going to make one. Um, I'm not going to make it. It's not my own design, that's for sure. I'm not that into the redstone department so um, if uh, you need to sort of make the something of similar you know some sort of redstone piston contraption um, YouTube is your best bet for all that stuff uh, but also note that this is also I'm playing on bedrock edition and the rules for redstone are quite different than if you're playing on Java uh, just so you know. So, um, you do have to go looking for those specific tutorials. But I did find one, uh, enough to have a door three blocks wide and I'll make it sort of too high. Um, there'll be a button on either end so we can enter and exit as we please and no mobs will sort of wander up and cause the door to open on their own. So we'll take a look at our inventory. Uh, and the design is pretty simple, at least I'm hoping so. Uh, six sticky pistons, they gotta be sticky because you want to have them have the um, blocks in hand. Um, some building materials, so building blocks, again stone bricks and blackstone for what I'm using this for. Uh, one block of redstone, one redstone torch, and uh, some redstone. You don't actually need that much, but uh, some is fine. I'd probably say about 20 or so. Uh, and a couple buttons. Uh, so we'll get to that in a moment. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to tear all this down. And we're going to get rid of some of these blocks as well. In fact, we may shove the door a little bit further forward now. That's fine. Uh, so we got three spots. We're also going to take out in this wall section. Okay, so the first thing I think we want to do is we're going to start making our hole and we're going to go down two blocks. Uh, we'll need to carve out some space in front and behind, but you know what? That's all fine and dandy. All right, and first things first, let's, nope. 
we want to lay down our sticking pi sticky pistons. Sticking pistons. They'll be sticking in a moment. Nope. There we go. So that the sticky part is facing up. Uh, and then once that's there, uh, your block of choice. Right now, the door will be made out of blackstone. Um, while I continue to struggle to get up, uh, what we'll also do, uh, we need to lay down a couple of blocks and could be building blocks, so I'm just going to use cobblestone for now since it's the most generic uh, type of stone I have. Uh, so three stones, uh, first one in the middle of the sticky pistons, one on, um, I'm going to put it on the left hand side because that's where my buttons will be, and then one in this corner for the third sticky piston. And then it's redstone time. So we're going to lay down our redstone in a wire fashion going to there and down the other side here to there and that should be it for this section. So for the next part we're actually going to put up a wall need one more sticky piston. I totally forgot that. And it's getting dark out, so that's fancy. Uh, but you want to make a three, three by three, nine block wall on either side of the doorway. Like so. All right, and back up we go. Uh, so, I think we need to knock out this wall too. But you know what, that's fine. We'll, we'll deal. We'll make it pretty afterwards. So, we need to do, we need to get down to here. Let's break that down as well. Uh, and we'll do this. Okay, so our next, we do have one more sticky piston now that we needed. And it will go in the middle block facing downwards, like so. That's where the redstone block comes in, and once that's in, the lower three pistons should activate. And they are, so we know we're on the right path. Let's fill in this part, because we don't need it anymore. And the next thing is that we're going to need a block on either side. Probably going to have to... Uh, I'm gonna probably have to make myself a little hole until this is complete, but that's fine. Uh, so there is a block on either side of that piston facing downwards. And on each side of those goes a redstone dust. Because... This is where our buttons are going to come into play here. So one there. And one there. So if we hit the button, that causes the, the switch to deactivate and that lowers the wall. So perfect. We know the bottom side is working. So now we have to get it to the top. Uh, and that's where, uh, you know what, we're going to switch up our blocks. Because I had this design of blackstone followed by these blocks. So let's then put in that block. So we're going to change just 
this, but it could be any sort of building block material. It doesn't necessarily need to follow this particular design. It's just how I'm making my door. So what? To make things easier on ourselves, we can... I'm going to make that look nicer as well, but we can fill in this bottom space. We don't need that anymore. Now I need to come out going parallel to the door because this will be where our next set of pistons go. And again, all facing downward. Let's do that. Uh, okay, and then this is where... Alright, so I'm going to have to demolish some of this, but that's fine. Because we need... This is where the redstone torch comes into play. I believe, again, I'm just trying to remember the design that was done. It should go on there. With a block. Can I actually make it the same block as my intended design here? And we're going to find out the e hard way. Hard way? Easy way. Oh, we're going to find out in a way. Nope. Ah, oh, you know what? That'll work. I think that'll work. We're going to see if that works. Uh, so then we need the last of our redstone dust to sort of finish this off. And since it's coming up here, there, does that actually, you know, it's not engaging the top blocks. Something is wrong. I wonder if it's the block that's doing it. Or did I even put any on? No, I didn't. <laughs> that's the disconnect. Okay. Incomplete wire. That's why I'm not the red redstone expert. Nope. Okay. Well, then we'll just use a normal block then. Something's not quite right. Nope, still not engaged.
Aha, I got it. All right, so the problem was the fact that I needed a block above this piston before the redstone torch. Now everything's working the way it should be. And then all I need to do is pretty this up and we have ourselves a functional doorway uh, that I can sort of <laughs> make my way through. Uh, okay. So just as long as, you know, and it's already night, so maybe we'll get this sort of back to daytime and then we can pretty it up. So be right back. Okay, folks, and it looks like we got our perimeter done along with our two main entranceways, at least as far as going north and going west is concerned. So again, up these stairs, we're sort of plotting this out as our industrial area, and I used I moved one of my doggies so that he could uh, keep a better eye of the situation up here. Um, but yeah, it took me a couple tries to get the doors down and you know get some cosmetics around it. So I'm kind of pleased with the results. Simple yet effective. Uh, so one doorway here. Um, couldn't find a way to block the <laughs> the redstone dust so I used glass. Uh, and then I extended my northern wall all the way down the mountain here or the hill. Whatever you want to call it. And I have the exact same setup here so let to get out. Uh, and also made a stairway so that we can traverse up here and down uh, that away. Um, it's sort of the bridge to the swamp and to the extra village. Uh, and we'll be doing some stuff around there um, in the not too distant future, I would suspect. So let's head on back. Extended this out so that the wall can join it correctly, uh, along with my bunny. Uh, farm, which whether you knew, I couldn't remember if I said or not, but yeah, behind my stables, made myself a little bunny farm, you know, should the need arise. Uh, and then over here, um, I did away with the fence and extended the front a little bit. So yeah, um, may, well, I got some torches lighting everything up just so that uh, we don't have monsters coming and wrecking stuff again like they usually do. Uh, but pleased with the results. Uh, may do some stuff off camera just to get more of the pathways in order. Actually, before we end things, since that uh, those uh, piston doors were a nice addition but didn't take too much time, uh, we'll do another small project and this one will be an automatic fishing uh, farm, I guess you could say. Again, uh, this is bedrock, so I'm not sure if this would work on Java, but here's uh, all the materials. Doesn't take too long and doesn't take an awful lot to create either. Uh, so building block of choice, I'm going to use polished granite just for the heck of it. Um, uh, hopper, hopper and a minecart with a hopper, so just so you know. So two hoppers, three chests. Uh, we'll need a bucket of lava, uh, a bunch of water. Um, you'll need at least one rail to start things off, but uh, that will quickly get uh, omitted. Uh, a couple of signs, doesn't matter which ones. And then probably the most uh, <laughs> tricky item to get out of all this is uh, a fish in a bucket, whether it's salmon or, uh, well, the other one. <laughs> but with your building block of choice, you need to make a seven 
by seven, I guess you could call it tank, uh, is basically a big thing where all the water is going to be put in. Now I'm going to put mine in the water, but this can totally be done on ground, does not matter to be in the water. I'm just being difficult like that. So give me a minute and I'll start things off and we'll pick it up once uh, this is in place. Once you're done you should have a tank that is measuring five length five wide and five deep um, and the reason I put it into the lake that I currently existed is because the next step you need to fill in the tank with um, water and it's got to be all water source blocks so the easiest way of doing that would be to just empty your buckets I think I messed that up already. Take that back. By going five across one way and then along the other side, five across the other way. And that should make that level all water source blocks. There, so this level should be all complete and no water should be pushing me anywhere else. Uh, so we'll just complete that for the top. So the last thing we want to do before the sun sets, just to finish off our tank, uh, we'll need one of these chests and a sign. You want to break one of your sides, one just one block, um, this should be good, uh, and then as the water is flowing out, place your box. Uh, now we need to water log this area, so try and find a corner in between the building, the building block. Uh, and then lastly, before I get swept away, don't know if I did it correctly or not, but... Uh, there, and that will stop the water flow. Okay, okay, so down near the bottom of your tank, uh, we are going to put in, not that, we're gonna put in our chest, and we'll make it a double chest for now. Uh, and then like always, your hopper, pointing towards the chest so if I drop anything oh, if I drop anything into the hopper it goes into the chest okay perfect uh, now comes uh, the somewhat difficult part I would believe Okay, so this is future Shin Virtuality, possibly making up for past Shin Virtuality's mistakes. Perhaps you'll never know. Um, so we have our chests. Uh, we have the. Um, yeah, let's you know what? Let's take out this block because uh, when you're at this step, what you need to do, we will put our rail down on the hopper like so. We will put our minecart cart 
onto the rail like so. We have to take out the rail without taking out the minecart. So as long as you're highlighting the rail, it slunkers down like that. And then you need a signpost on the full block side of the minecart. Nope. There, so as long as the signpost is hitting beside the minecart, you're good. So we'll just fill in our blocks just to keep that the minecart from ever going away. Uh, and then that should do it. So put in these blocks because the next step will be to fill the space above the minecart with the hopper with lava. And the signpost should keep the lava into this block space and not destroy anything underneath. Fingers crossed. I'm going to put those blocks there. That's going to be like our little standing perch for when we go fishing. And a unique trick to do um, put in three blocks, take out the two, and then on a, the third block, still in the air, place a slab underneath it, and then take out the block. Uh, what this will do, it'll stop you from proceeding down into the lava, just so you don't get too close. Uh, and I'll see if there's anything else that I can do to sort of keep myself from being a bumbling idiot when doing that. But it's pretty much done. The only thing left will be this little guy here. You want to take your bucket of fish, whatever it may be, and put them in the pool. So there you go. Happy, happy fish. So, okay guys, it's been a couple of days since we put our fishing tank to work, well, since we built it, and I just wanted to make sure that everything was working well on it, and it is. So, ideally, um, well, I made myself one of the best fishing holes in the game. Uh, Luck of the Sea 3, Unbreakable 3, Lure 3, and we even slapped on Mending, even though this tank doesn't really need it. So the general premise is head up towards the chest with the sign in front of it, just underneath the lava. If you cast your rod, the floater will sort of levitate in the air for a bit. You'll catch the fish that's in the tank, but the fish won't actually be caught, they'll still be in the tank, uh, and then whatever you grab as your sort of fishing loot will get filtered down through the lava, into the hopper, and then into the chest. And we'll show you that in a moment after I demonstrate a couple of times. Uh, if you point your cursor at the sign and let, fr let fly with your fishing rod, uh, then, you know, everything just sort of goes along automatically. So you can just sit here. Um, cast your fishing line uh, as you're waiting for the day to sort of progress on and it'll do whatever it needs to do automatically. All you really need to do is just recast the line whenever it gets back to your rod. Like so. And of course after a bit you can check your chest. And as you can see, you can get a lot of good stuff real quick here. So apart from the fish, which is always good, uh, you can always get puffer fish and uh, even a tropical fish. All right, we got one there too. Um, but you'll also get stuff like enchantment books. So Aqua Infinity and Silk Touch, sure, won't deny that. Got a pretty awesome bow here. 
on breaking three power and infinity uh, you can get stuff like saddles and name tags those will always come out of uh, fishing when uh, lucky enough uh, and other fishing rods so like ideally I can uh, build myself an awesome fishing rod if I give it enough time uh, and get a couple of these just sort of um, <laughs> coming my way after the fact. Uh, so yeah, it sort of pays itself off once you get it up and running. Uh, so you can just sort of sit here, a Fortune 3 book, oh geez. Yeah, lots of good stuff to be had, especially if you have a pretty stacked fishing rod like I do. Um, just to make sure that all the enchantment stuff and any of the, the better items come through. So that's the automatic fishing uh, farm or tank or whatever you want to call it. Um, awesome, awesome thing. And you know what? Build it early game to get yourself some good stuff. Or now that I've defeated the dragon, like, I mean, it's just nice to have. So, you know, I thought it'd be a little bit of a fun project for today. But I hope you guys enjoyed the two little projects that I had for this episode. Um, I'll try and put the tutorial videos that I uh, looked up for this episode in the description. So if either of these projects interest you, uh, by all means check out the videos and build them for yourself in your own worlds. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, smack that like button. Leave a comment and subscribe to my channel for more Minecraft and mobile gaming videos coming up very soon. Until then, this has been Shin Virtuality. Game on, have fun, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, and have an awesome day. Bye now!